your goal. You see, ladies, there is no adversity, no power, or no force that can stop one who has their faith set in God. You see, as people, we are unique. We are rare, and our lives are unrepeatable events. You see, God is with us, in us, through us, and for us. And where God is, there can be no imperfection. Good afternoon, and we are at a glimpse of greatness. I'm Dr. Kimberly Ellison, and you know, I've been blessed to move from the projects to a PhD. You see, and most people think that that PhD is a doctorate of philosophy, but to me, that PhD stands for purpose, hope, and determination. You see, in the seventh grade, I was considered at risk, but I remember Miss Nancy Kerrigan. You see, she didn't just give me a poem, she gave me my life's mantra. It was called, I'm determined to be somebody someday. And that poem still rings true in my ears as a woman. It still rings true through every stage of my life. It was written by William Herbert Brewster to the Negro youth. And see, what I thought is I was getting in front of a seventh grade class to just tell a story about a poem, but I did not know that it would become my life's mantra. So I can still hear it today, and it goes a little bit like this. It says, there's no royal blood of coursing in my veins. No great family background for me remains. You see, I haven't had a chance as others have had. And my living conditions have been kind of bad. But, ladies, it makes no difference what folks think or say. Because I determined to be somebody someday. You see, I am the daughter of a janitor with a sixth grade education. And although my dad never had a formal degree or, or even had a corporate job, you see, he taught me my life's greatest lessons. He said, Nikki, that's what my family calls me. <laughs> your history is the passport to your destiny. And then he told me that just because it hasn't been done in your family doesn't mean that it can't be done. You see, those were the lessons of a maintenance man, a janitor, whose keys hung on the side of his pants buckle. You see, they didn't just open up doors to the classroom to clean them, but what my father's keys did was open up my destiny. You see, by him not finishing school, what he did was give me a glimpse of my greatness. And so one thing I had to find out, ladies, is I had a choice. I had to choose between my history and my destiny. You see, I had to, a choice. And much like you, you have a choice on today. You have to choose between the glimpse and the gap. You see, I have this PhD and I was on this journey, but before I started this PhD, I could see myself graduating. But the reason I started it because I wanted to change the leaves on my family tree. You see, I wanted to change the generational disposition of my bloodline. And so I could see myself, you know, walking across the stage at graduation, and I wanted to have on that, that, that doctor gown. You know that gown is it's big. Y'all know what it looks like. It has those two velvet panels down the middle, and then it has those velvet stripes on the side on both arms. You see, I could see myself walking across that stage, grabbing my degree. I could see it. But see, what you did not tell me was that in between the glimpse was a gap. Nobody told me about the gap. So it took me seven years to move from my glimpse to my reality. You see, when you think about the glimpse, the glimpse was the vision that I connected to. The, the, the glimpse was the thing, it was my expectation. You see, when you see yourself, you create an expectation. So I held on to the expectation. But see, there was something between the gap and the glimpse that I didn't have a clue about. 
You see, a glimpse is to, what that means, ladies, is to see or perceive briefly. But see, the gap, that is a break or a hole in an element or one object, or it could be between two objects. You see, along the journey, no one ever told me that the glimpse was there to tell me my destination, but the gap was there to help me find my determination. <laughs> and so as I was looking for this, this glimpse, I found that there are some, only some things that you can learn in the gap that the glimpse can't teach you. You see, the glimpse came to show me my possibilities. But the gap, ladies, comes to challenge your abilities. So I had to choose between where I was and where I was going. But it's something about the glimpse. It never shows you when you're going to arrive. <laughs> and I remember taking a trip. I had an opportunity, ladies, to go to the UK and speak on an international platform with women. I took the Kingdom Boss Chicks with me. Some of you all are here today. And we actually took this trip in anticipation and anxiousness, and we were excited because this was the first time that we were going to go on an international trip in ministry and working in the business, and we were going to take the UK by storm. You hear me? So we were excited. We, were, we got on our plane, and we were, I'm talking about, it was about eight of us. And so we got on the plane, and we flew from here, from the U.S., to Heathrow Airport. And we got to Heathrow, and if you know anything about, you know, people who ain't never been to international, you know, you know we're looking around, and we're looking at all the signs, and we're doing all this stuff. And so we get there, we get to the baggage claim, we get our luggage, and then we're like, okay, now we're going to go to our destination. Well, we found out that we had to take a train to actually get to our final destination. And so what happened is we got our bags and we got in tow and we was carrying them all and we were just excited looking in the email. And we got up to uh, the train and so we got there, the train wasn't there. So I we sat there, they're talking, but what I did, I looked around and I saw this clock. And on this clock, the clock tells you how many minutes before the train arrives. So I looked at this clock, and we had a few minutes before the train arrived. But then I had to see the train coming. All of a sudden, I hear over the loudspeaker, over the PA, I hear this voice. I hear this woman with a British accent. And she says, mind the gap. So I got excited. I was like, what? Well, mind the gap? What that mean? We don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and so just about when the train arrived and we were about to get aboard the train I stood on this side and I heard the woman's voice come across the PA system again in that British accent and she says mind the gap you see, the gap was the spatial place between the door entry to the train and the stationary platform on this side. And so what she was trying to tell us that if you are going to go and get to your final destination, you're going to have to mind the gap. And see, your mind is the element of a person that enables you to be aware of the world and the experiences around you. You see, that is your ability to think, your ability to feel. It is your faculty of consciousness. It is your thoughts. And so what I came here to tell you on today is if you are going to take a look at the glimpse and you're going to have a glimpse at greatness and you're going to move from where you are to where you're supposed to be, you're going to have to make it a matter of your mind. You see, the glimpse comes to prepare you, but the gap <coughs> comes to propel you. What I learned when I was um, along my PhD journey is that the glimpse came to show me my destination, but I never, it never said when you were going to get there. 
And the gap, what the gap did, it started to start to bring up some of my insecurities. It shined a light on my inabilities. It shined a light on my insecurities. And it shined a light on my ability to look at something and say, I might not be able to succeed. And so along the journey of this PhD, in those seven years, I met the man of my realities. <laughs> and we got engaged. I met him in January, and he proposed in November. <laughs> we got married. We built a home. And we got pregnant with our first child. Our first baby. Neither one of us had children. So we were excited. Can you imagine the excitement? You see, that was the glimpse. You pursuing your PhD and you get a husband in nine or 10 months, who wanna do that? <laughs> and then you build a home and you get, do you understand like, what are you that? And so I was living in my glimpse. But see, then the unimaginable happened. I began to experience death and birth at the same time. You see, at the time that I was pursuing my PhD and I, there were the expectations and the hopes and the dreams of me becoming this PhD doctorate candidate and to have a, you know, a doctoral degree at the same time that I was giving birth to that glimpse was the same time that I was giving birth to my daughter. I was giving birth to being a mother. I was giving birth to having daughter and mommy day. I was giving birth. But she was prematurely born and her lungs were underdeveloped. And so we lost her. My namesake, McCarty Nicole. When do you experience death and birth at the same time? So we didn't only lose her, but I lost my faith and I lost my trust in God. Because see, what the glimpse doesn't tell you is the journey that you're gonna take on this destination. And so, ladies, where I was and what I what I seen didn't match up. My reality didn't look like my destiny. But we were blessed to get pregnant again. And we were blessed to, be blessed to get pregnant two more times. And you know, on this journey to pursuing my PhD and, 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 and trying to become a mom and trying to prove that I can carry a baby and trying to prove that thing. And so what happened is I ended up on bed rest. I had to take injections over and over. And I had to be on bed rest for almost two years. because I had to keep my baby in full term. And so at the end of those seven years, at the very end, I put on that graduation regalia. Y'all remember with the velvet panels going down the front? and the three stripes on each arm. And I carried my daddy and my daughter across that stage. I grabbed my degree and I walked across the audience, but I didn't go into the seat with everybody else. I went over there and I kissed my two babies. You see, what I came to tell you is that whether you're about to birth something in the natural or whether you're about to birth something in the spiritual, your promise might not look like your process. So what I want you to do in my last couple of seconds is I want you to close your eyes and I want you to remember that glimpse. I want you to remember that place that 
you began to dream before and you put it away, I want you to begin to remember that because I want to encourage you just because you are in the gap. Do not allow the glare of the gap to rob you of your glimpse. Because ladies and gentlemen, what you see is what you get. But you have to mind the gap. Okay.